Hey guys, today I'll show you guys how to solve the spiral matrix 3 problem. So the problem states that on a two-dimensional grid with R rows and C columns, we start at a random um, coordinate facing east. And so then they're saying that the northwest corner of the grid is at the first column and first row and then the southeast of the grid is at the last row and last column. So basically your typical representation of a grid. And now we want to walk in a clockwise spiral shape to visit every position in this grid. So basically, if you look at this picture here, we want to walk east and then south and then west and then north and then repeat. And then the catch with this problem is that we can actually walk outside of the grid but eventually we'll come back and visit everything inside the original grid. So this problem seems kind of difficult at first, but once you find a um, catch, this becomes very uh, easy. Um, so first, let's see how we should do this. So we know that we want to walk east, then south, then west, then north, and repeat. And we know that we only want to record um, positions that are inside the grid, so we don't care about these positions at all. So we should implement some kind of um, <coughs> boundary check that checks whether or not the position is inside the grid. And now for the main uh, focus of the problem, we want to know how do we implement such a spiral walk. So to um, clarify what we should do, we have to notice a pattern here. So let's say this is our arbitrary point. Oops. This is our arbitrary point here. And first we want to walk um, east. And then we want to walk downwards. And then left. And then up. And then repeat. We notice that, one thing you can notice that here is that the distance between the original and the new point here is one. Similarly, it's the one here as well. But however, as we get here, we becomes two. Then here also becomes two. And then here the distance becomes three. And, and then if you go one more, it becomes three as well. And then if you go one more here, you realize that this becomes four. So we have a spiral pattern here. The number of steps we take in each direction becomes one, one, two, two, three, three, and four, four, and so on. So that's a very important pattern and it makes the code so much easier. So let's go ahead and try implementing this. <clears throat> okay, so first what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create actually a, a list of directions in representation of um, which direction we should move. And I'm going to do it in a list of tuples. So basically, list of directions. And here we're going to implement east first. So that'll be 0, 1. And I'm using the row column notation. So basically, the first, first element is going to be the row 2. So basically, east, we are not moving um, uh, up or down. So it will be 0. But we're moving um, right. So we're adding 1. And then similarly for south, it will be 1, 0. And then uh, left would be 0, negative 1. And uh, up would be negative 1, 0. All right. And then I'm also going to keep an index for that direction because we'll be switching direction at every step. So right now it would be 0 because we will no longer move east. And then we want to keep track of the total because we know that once we reached every grid, which is just the area of the grid, which is just going to be the row number of rows times the number of columns, we know we have we are done. <coughs> and now we want to know how many steps it takes. So <coughs> right now we assuming that we are already at the original position and we're about to head east, we're going to take one step. And then the increment right now is going to be one because to go east, we need to move uh, one 
step in that direction and then one again and then two and then two and then three and then three and so forth so increment keeps track of that and then the result is what we're going to keep track of our positions so right now we know that we can keep the origin of where we came from which could be anything right now now we can create a while loop that will terminate when we are done walking which is going to be when we have visited every position inside the grid. So here, I'm actually going to start the spiral walking. So I'm going to iterate through the increment size. And then I'm going to take advantage of the directions array we make. So basically what I want to do is take the direction that we're going right now, which is east, take the first in element of that which is going to be the change in the row direction and then I'm going to do the same for the columns and then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say if if I am within the bounds which is going to be if um, I'm, the row is greater than or equal to zero and that is you know less than the size of the boundary and similarly for column and then I'll, if this is true then I want to append this position to my result array so I want to append this and then so after that for loop is done and after we have recorded every single position that's within the grid we want to now change our direction so now I'm just going to change my direction by taking advantage of mod so that I stay within the size of the array and doesn't have a array out of bounds here. And then here's the trick. Um, since we realized that, <clears throat> we know we realized that every two steps we increment our step size. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to check if we're where step size is mod 2 is even then I'm going to increment the step size and then steps is always going to be increment by 1 and then I'm going to return the final result so let's give it a quick double check um, we can make a quick double check right here and making the class. So I'm going to say solution spiral matrix. Okay, I'm going to use the example they gave us from here. So 5614. 5614. And then I'm going to print the result here. Oops, name R is not defined. Oh, sorry. Huh. We're infinite looping somewhere. Well, let's take a look where that might be. Um. And when we're inside, oh, wait, sorry, this should be the columns. Okay, so let's double check and see if that matches. So 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 5, 2, 4, yada, yada, yada. Let's go to the end. Uh, 4, 4, see 4, 4 here, and then probably 4, 3. And then just quickly scan over one one zero one four zero three zero two zero. Okay, so that looks like it actually works. And let's try skipping this a go. Let's run it first. See if it compiles. Okay, looks as expected. And now let's submit our solution. Alright guys, so it worked and I uh, hope that was really helpful. Thank you.